Hello, welcome back to the live stream. I know I haven't streamed in a couple of weeks. Uh, I have been out of town a lot, and uh, let me tell you what I've been up to. Let's see, uh, I went to a rehearsal, and uh, that rehearsal was for a brass quintet concert that was at Western Carolina University, and we played a very cool um, uh, uh, transcription of Rhapsody in Blue that actually Fred Mills of Canadian Brass fame did long ago and was uh, redone by Brad Ulrich, uh, which is our uh, the other trumpet player in that group who, who founded it. And so, uh, yeah, hard, hard piccolo trumpet part that Fred wrote for himself. Um, and so I was kind of getting through that and trying to figure that out and recovering some from those concerts. Then um, I can't remember what the other thing was. but uh, And then uh, this weekend I went to the Boston Marathon. My girlfriend ran in it and did quite well. Uh, I think 314 was the, the final time, which is amazing. And uh, I got to be there with her. I did not run, although I did do a lot of walking. And uh, I decided this time to, uh, I did not bring a trumpet. This is the first vacation, if you will, uh, that I've been on for, I mean, and I, I put that in quotes because it, it really just any out of town, any like, even if you're out of town on business or for some family reason, um, you know, uh, time away uh, from, from my instruments here. Uh, it's the first time I've gone away and not brought a trumpet in maybe ever. And so I wanted to show you what I did and uh, I have not played the trumpet yet. Uh, since I got back. I got back at 2 a.m. today, so I slept a lot and now it's 2 p.m. and so it's time to get back to work. Uh, so we're going to find out together whether my strategy worked and I'll talk about it a little bit and uh, this is going to be probably a little bit of a long session, but I'm not going to talk as much as I normally do uh, about anything in specific or at the, at the top here. I'm just going to get right to what I did. So we're going to do what I did each day of, uh, of, the, uh, of our time in Boston and, uh, and I'll sort of describe it a little bit, but that's all we're going to do. So I only had a few minutes each day uh, that we weren't busy doing something else. And so what I used was uh, the Stomby up sound. Uh, this is just the top of it. I always lose the bottom part because I change out the, uh, the filter piece. Uh, this is the harder one, and that's what I like to use. But it comes with this one here, and uh, this, is the one that, uh, this is the one that I usually start with. Uh, or end with. It depends on what you're trying to get done. And then uh, I just have all my mouthpieces here. We've got our tuba mouthpiece, our trombone mouthpiece, our bass trumpet mouthpiece, our other bass trumpet mouthpiece, uh, our what I like to call the zero and a half C, which is uh, just a, a, a reamed out one and a half, um, and then our cutout. But I usually don't use the actual cutout because now we have the embouchure, or what I like to call the hooten out. Uh, and this device really is the linchpin for this, this system. Uh, again, we'll see if it works, but um, uh, if it doesn't, it's not, it's not the Hootenout's fault. It's, it's because I should have brought a trumpet, right? So, well, we'll see. I'm going to start with the, um, the up sound on hard mode, and we're just going to leave it there for now. I like to keep it stored. If you go to the, if you go to the hardware store, you can buy PVC. Uh, this is just a PVC connector. Um, it's got threads in there, but we don't need them but it's just a little hex, you know, PVC round thing. And uh, it, it fits perfectly in there so that this is being stored so that the condensation drips out of it through the, through the receiver. So anyway, that's what that is. Uh, you should get one if you own one of these because it really keeps it a lot cleaner for a lot longer. You still have to clean it though. All right, so what are we doing? Well, uh, what I actually started with was the big straw. And uh, this is an easy one because you don't have to bring it with you. You can just go stop at a gas station or, you know, if you got a drink at a, a fast food joint, then you just steal your straw and rinse it out later. And now you've got uh, a blowing tube. And so why do, why do I like this blowing tube? Well, uh, I, if I just blow through it a little bit, I get a sense of how the airflow might feel if I was actually playing the trumpet. And since I don't have a trumpet, um, you know, this this simulates the airflow. It's not 100% exactly right, but uh, that resisted airflow that is because of the vibration and the length of the trumpet, this comes pretty close uh, at this length and this diameter. So you might have to add a couple of them together if they're McDonald's straws or just go to a different place. Uh, if it's too tight, then you can cut part of it off and that'll change the length, which will change the resistance. But anyway, 
So let's start with that. And I'm just going to do some big, long breaths. Uh, if anybody has any questions when you're watching this, by the way, feel free to either type them in the chat or send me an email and I will try to answer them next time. So, uh, okay, without further ado, let's start our routine. I, I'm not going to time it either. I'm just going to do it what it says on my book. So, big straw. So I'm trying to do perfect turnaround so I'm not holding my breath, I'm just breathing and blowing, right? And uh, I'm changing the location of the straw, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it will fill up with sort of a cond condensate saliva, so, you know. You can see right there. So I'm running out of air faster than I normally would. Sorry for that. Um, but it does give me a sense of something to blow against and something to exponentially support into, right? So that's all this is for. I did a little bit of that. It's also very quiet. Uh, I was in a hotel room or in a hotel somewhere for all of this, so you need quiet things because uh, trumpet's not quiet, but neither is mouthpiece, really. So, all right, now, uh, let's get a C figured out. That's an A, so this is a C. You can always practice your relative pitch. Okay, and I'm just going to go uh, not to the tuba mouthpiece yet, actually, but to the hooten out. And so what do I want from this? Well, I want the aperture part, right? That's what I want on all my mouthpieces, actually. Uh, even, even the biggest one, even the tuba. Because remember, we're not playing tuba, we're playing trumpet. And we're using the tuba mouthpiece and the trom trombo mouthpiece, and et cetera, et cetera, as a tool to, uh, well, well, we'll talk about it when we get there. But So I want this aperture, but I also like the peat side. Uh, it's not called a peat here because it's not the Warburton peat, but it's like that, right? Uh, except you can blow through it. So I'm going to start with that side, and I'm just going to get the foundation of like holding and, and, and resisting that pull a little bit um, so that then when I turn it around, I've got that rolled in but also three-dimensional pucker uh, embouchure, and then I'm going to apply that to this. So, uh, let's see if we can do that. So that's the embouchure we're looking for. Sorry, I want to turn on some more lights so that I'm not quite so shadowy when I do this. Uh, that's better. Still a shadow from this light, but I think we have to keep it because that's the most of the light on, that's on me. So, okay. Got it on this one. Now let's go to this one, right? And if I need to, I can always re-up. I can say, all right. Uh-huh.
sorry about that. And uh, a lot of this is about tongue position in the front. I don't want it to be too high. Uh, it, it tends to be unstable when I get just a straight, like higher, 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 and then the front. That works great in the high register when it's already stable uh, because of the velocities, but in the lower register, I need some more space there. Uh, but I don't want to lose my tongue control, tongue position control of the note and of the tone. So I tend to have this kind of flattened out front of the tongue position that guides the that guides the air right to the spot where the aperture is going to buzz, right? So let's free up again and get our, uh, yeah. trying to set this up on all the mouthpieces. Now, I said that we would talk about it while we do it. Why, why all these mouthpieces? Well, uh, I want to physically know the way that I want to make my embouchure, no matter what the rim, where the rim is seated. And uh, you, that might not make any sense because, well, obviously when I actually play the trumpet, the rim is going to be pretty well situated in one spot. It's hard to move it around while you play, even when you play wet like I do. There's not a lot of wiggle room for that. Um, and certainly not like sliding around your face, right? Unless you play with so little pressure and then you're not probably playing anything. Um, well, it's more about muscle awareness. When I, when I play the trumpet, I can play it really relaxed and really uh, where I just blow and my lips just kind of buzz. But even just there, did you see? You know, and you might say, well, yeah, but that's what the rim's for. Yeah, kind of. Uh, but you, you tend to be limited if you play that way to um, restricted in some way. Maybe your range is a restriction because, well, that's not really, you know, firm enough to hold up under the high pressures of the high range. Or maybe it's the low range that fails. Um, maybe it's your sound is just kind of uh, basic and, and not very complex and sort of full. Uh, there can be a lot of things where if you play too relaxed, so to speak, uh, then you're, you're letting things work, which is a good thing, but... Uh, you get a little bit kind of boxed into a corner because you're not really actively engaging. And uh, you, you want something that you can maintain the entire time that you're playing so that if you have to play a high F, well, okay. You play with the same embouchure that you might play a low A, even if there are different dynamics or different colors or obviously different notes, right? And so you want something that works in all the registers. Uh, and that's that's one of the primary reasons why people don't have a good high range is because they they've had to change into some other embouchure in order to play in the high range. And so they figured that part out, but they can't play the entire trumpet with that, that, that embouchure. And so then they, they tend to change, you know, in the middle register, they kind of play with something more relaxed. In the higher register, they tend to play with something way too tight and sort of hard. Uh, in the low, low register, they just kind of flab out and just, you know, try to play down there in, by any means necessary. And uh, that's not a sustainable way to play, especially as you get older. It takes too much work to change in between embouchures, even if you have time. And uh, it's better to find an embouchure that works for everything. And that's what this is doing for me, is I'm trying to find a way to make this tool tell me the aperture I want and then hold it with my muscles and my tongue position uh, so that when I actually do get to the real trumpet, it just works. And we'll see in a second, uh, when I play the up sound, it's all about getting that to go instantly into response. If I get the shapes or the, or the lip wrong, then it doesn't respond right away. And I get this airy beginning and then maybe a, a, a response. Uh, and that tends to be inefficient as well, because then I'm forcing it to respond after I wanted it to. So not only am I late, I'm also like doing more work than I wanted to in the first place, which is already probably you know, plenty, right? So anyway, back to this. Da, yeah, da. Let's get this side again. Mm. 
this side helps me engage more muscles. Like this one was totally delinquent just now. And I felt it because there was a hole there. It was like, well, these are working really hard. What, what's going on up here? Nothing. So I can help, help, help that activate so that it's more evenly distributed. Then now we're at the zero and a half C. And I could be doing these on the up sound, but uh, I'm just trying to get the, 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 the lip part of it right. to try to do that low A. And then we'd be on to the, the regular cutout, which I still do love because it's a screw rim cutout. This was made by Park a long time ago. And it literally is a cutout mouthpiece that had a screw rim. So you can make this pretty easily on your own if you just happen to have a hacksaw and a drill and a couple of vices and a very good aim. <laughs> then, uh, you, But you have to have a screw rim top to start, right? And then you, t you obviously take the rim off to do all that and really try hard not to damage the threads. But anyway, since we don't, since we have the hooten out, instead, we don't need, some people call it a skeleton mouthpiece as well, or a visualizer, because uh, you can sort of see in there. Um, but I call it a cutout because this is what I always had. Um, we, we have this instead. And even though it's not ex my exact rim, uh, I'm, uh, I, the, the other part is so valuable to me that I'd rather not mess with this right now. So let's get our A again. Does a C. Why do I do C? I don't know. I just, it's something. Uh, low A seems to be too low most of the time. So, uh, let's check it again. Da -da. Let me check this side. A lot of days that's very very tight on my lip I feel like I can't move the air and that's the reason we have the big straw if it's feeling a lot tighter than this straw then I am probably doing something weird if it's feeling a lot looser than the straw I'm definitely doing something weird because this is a really this is already too open really remember I'm I, if I blow through it and I run out of air faster than I would have done a long tone this is not the same resistance. Now, it's not supposed to be because my lips aren't vibrating. So I still like this as an approximation of the, the trumpet. Um, it's not supposed to be the bore of the trumpet, right? But it's supposed to be like a combination of the bore of the trumpet plus the vibration if it was happening so that I don't have to worry about that part. 
Anyway, I also learned, uh, this is a stupid trick, but I did it, I did do it once before I left and then forgot about it promptly until this moment. Um, so, okay, that, that, sorry, that's the mouthpieces thing. Uh, and now I would rest, right? But I've been resting plenty in between, so I can keep showing you stuff. Um, I was trying to figure out, like, I wanted to bring a lead pipe, right? Just a, just the raw, let me get one, hold on, sorry. Um, yeah, just the lead pipe of a trumpet, right? This is a, this is a Chicago B-flat, Yam uh, Yamaha Chicago Gen 2 B-flat lead pipe that I have uh, in case I ever want to upgrade the lead pipe on my Gen 1. I don't because the Gen 1s are still the best. But this is a very good lead pipe that I probably eventually will put on one of my one of my B-flat uh, Chicago Gen 1s as a, a and I'll, I'll trick it out with my tools as a way to uh, like make sort of hot rod um, so, so it, it, you know, it has a slightly more compact and centered upper register and a little brighter sound and stuff like that. So that that'll be my commercial solo horn. And then, you know, and I'm still playing a Yamaha then. But anyway, I wanted to bring a lead pipe um, because I was like, well, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm going to need to play the lead pipe uh, like as a, as a substitute for, because I want reflection, right? Uh, and so if I bring a lead pipe, then I can have reflection. And basically I'm playing the trumpet at that point, just without valves or anything, but at least I'm maintaining all of my skills. So I haven't done this, but uh, this is what you would do is you just bring your lead pipe. Uh, there's also a thing called uh, the, oh man, what is it called? Something cut, cut. I don't know. Joe, Joe Rowell makes a bell on a lead pipe and man, I wish I could remember the name of it. It's a little bit expensive, but it's it's essentially this, and maybe I should buy one for trips like this. But uh, I don't really need the bell, though. I, I, I actually don't want it because I don't want to amplify anything at all. But um, so you just use it like the lead, it is the lead pipe, right? So you just have to hold it very carefully. I like to hold it at the solder points so that I'm not dampening it any more than I have to. And... <laughs> So you can use this as a lead pipe. I'm trying not to apply too much pressure uh, so that I don't ruin the next thing I want to show you, which is my bad substitute for the lead pipe, which is the same straw shoved up the bottom of the trumpet mouthpiece so that it's 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 kind of stuck right up the like it, it it's touching the sides right so that it's completely cutting off the mouthpiece itself. And uh, I the reason I didn't do this is because it's not very good, but I'll show it to you anyway. So you can kind of get like an octave and then there's like a fifth up there. But again, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get through the, the stuff that I actually did. And then we'll get into real warming up. I, I don't want to find out too soon that my uh, endeavors over the weekend were not fruitful. <laughs> we'll find that out together, but, but not the wrong way. So anyway, that's another way you can do it. That has a little bit of resistance um, in the same way that the reflection, it, like it, it starts to exist because the standing wave can exist. Uh, or I should say can propagate. It always exists, but it can propagate in a way that I can feel. Uh, it's not really good because, it, well, first of all, this is plastic. Um, so it's not vibrating the same way that metal does. Uh, I'm also holding it, so I'm dampening it. It's also not the right length. Uh, there's a lot of wrong with it. But is it better than just the mouthpiece alone? I would argue that it's different, and maybe that's valuable if that's what you're looking for. Again, what, what, why do we do any of this stuff? Because we're trying to calibrate our, our senses and our physical abilities to be able to do things on the trumpet that maybe we previously couldn't, or at least maintain those things if we're away and just, not, you know. But I really want to make, I want to do better every day. So that's... That might be a tool that you use if you're like, I re this, this reflection thing is really important to me. Um, but okay, so uh, this is, okay, that's the real mouthpiece. Put that back. All right, so now we're going to do a little bit of up sound. So I usually would do the straw and then some mouthpieces, which we've done, and then uh, up sound stuff. And sometimes I'll start, I'll go back to the hooten out 
uh, I should call it by its real name, the embouchure. Um, I just think hooting out so much funnier. But uh, I, 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 sometimes we'll go back to this and just set that up before I actually use the up sound. I use the up sound with my uh, slightly too big throat mouthpiece. This is a this is a custom mouthpiece I had made by Peter Pickett. Uh, that is a copy of a seven a Bach straight seven and a Bach straight eight of different components of them from uh, the 1940s are both of the originals. And um, I liked the rim off of one of the, the off the eight, uh, but the the shank had been uh, tooled down to probably fit in an old receiver, if I had to guess. They have slightly narrower receivers, and uh, and so it just wobbles in your regular trumpet receiver, and that's that's not that you can't play that. But it was such a good mouthpiece that I even like tried to fix that. I tried to like tape it or whatever, and there's no way to do it. So I I got Peter to copy it for me, and I wasn't sure what uh, I, I knew. I wanted a 24 backbore, which is the symphonic backbore. Um, but I didn't know what hole size I wanted, and so I had to make one with a 26, and I had to make one with a 28. And you might think, well, obviously the 26 is the one that blows more freely and openly, and um, uh, you know it has it has a, a more orchestral kind of weight to it. Uh, and you would be wrong. Uh, the 26 hole is just wrong for this c particular configuration. So it it just it's it's diffuse. Uh, the sound is hard to get. Uh, maybe I'm just blowing too hard on it, honestly. I, I don't really understand why the 28 hole just sets up better, but it does. Uh, a lot of people really get bent out of shape about hole size in the mouthpiece throat, and uh, the truth is it doesn't matter nearly as much as you think it does for the thing that you think it matters for. That was poorly said. Um, we tend to think that the hole size is what's causing resistance, and technically that is true, it is the smallest point in the mouthpiece, but not in the way that you think you're feeling it. Um, what it affects way more is the way that the overtones stack up. So if you have a larger hole, then it spreads the overtones apart a little bit more. Um, and you can mitigate some of that by making it longer so that it doesn't taper right away. It doesn't, it doesn't flare, I should say, right after the hole. It has a little long part. So you, and a lot of times what people are doing is drilling out their mouthpiece with a drill, which is a straight side, right? And so they're trying to get it to blow more openly, but they're trying not to let it get sharper in the high range and flatter in the low range, which is very smart. Um, and it's a lot of, a lot of the bigger mouthpieces uh, designs out there uh, utilize that, especially for the extreme large throats like 18 and, and above. You have to have a long part in there or it just is like blown through it. <laughs> blown through a straw. But uh, but the smaller hole does the opposite. It, it reels those in a little bit. So if you tend to go sharp in the high register, and you want a smaller hole, that'll help you contain it. Um, same thing with the, the low register. I tend to go flat in the low register. Smaller hole helps me keep it up. And so um, now I don't know the physics behind that. I just know that that's practically what's happening. And, uh, and I don't really notice a difference between 26 and 28 as far as how it blows just what it does when I blow. Um, so that's, that's a good way to think about it. And hey, if you drill your mouthpiece out and you love it, do it, man. It's not my mouthpiece, go for it. Uh, I know a lot of people play like a drilled out 21, one and a half C and they sound great. And I'm like, wow, cool. Uh, I would have to be way stronger to play that. But if you are, I want to hear it. You know, like I've, I've heard a lot of people play that setup and it's amazing. Anyway, Okay, off the soapbox and on to the second part. I did need to rest a little bit. So uh, rest to talk about what we're doing today, not what we did this week. Um, when you're coming back from a vacation, whether you didn't play at all or you just did some things that aren't trumpet playing, you need to rest a lot more than you think you should uh, because you're going to feel fresh, right? You've, you, usually we're in a constant state of slightly damage because we play so much, and that's not great, but it's you know, better to be in shape in general. Uh, but usually when we take a couple of days off, we are like, oh man, I feel great. And then we hit it hard the next day and, uh, you hit it hard for about 30 minutes and then you put it in the box because nothing's coming out. That's what I'm trying to avoid right now. So I'm talking a little bit more now that we're into it. Um, but that's enough talk, I guess. Let's do some up sound. So this is going to be, uh, hooting out first and then right into the up sound. And I try to do it one handed and sometimes I get it, but I, I you know, I obviously didn't earlier. Uh, but we're going to do alarm clock tones slash medium tones, sometimes I call them. And we're just looking for instantaneous response 
and then we'll do some more stuff. But that's what we want first out of that. Now you might say, Gabriel, that sounds awful. It sounds like a, uh, like some sort of animal dying. Uh, yeah, I don't care. I just I, it's responding right away every time, and I'm getting a, a terrible double buzz. But I'm not. I don't care about a double buzz right now. I care about instant response, right? I want that air to respond, and if that means that that means my lips are almost in the right place. Uh, they might be a little too tight on one one lip or the other. Might be a little too close together or a little too far apart. I'm. That's what I'm calibrating, right? So that's what we're doing here. And a little bit of different embouchure posture, meaning the lip roll or the placement of the lips next, like inside the mouthpiece or in terms of each other. Uh, sometimes the horn angle, right? These are all things that I'm gonna adjust until it's instantaneous response and a pure tone. And then part of this is also my tongue position. So if I'm not having success with that, I'm gonna try to get the timbre first and maybe that will help me with my response, right? So let's try that. Okay, we're getting it. Uh, now, I was, I was falling into another old trap, which is that I tend to breathe and try again and breathe and try again, I'm not really releasing my notes, and that's a bad habit to get into. Um, because I do this a lot, I tend to have that habit, and uh, I'm trying to undo it. So, now, if you have a journal, then you can look at your journal, and it'll say, hey, don't, don't do this bad thing you always do. And you say, oh, yeah, thank you, Gabriel, from the past. I'll, I'll make sure that I... Uh, don't just breathe and cut off the notes. I have a whole list. It's not in front of me right now, and maybe it should be. But anyway, all right. So that's a little bit of hooting out. Oh, sorry, a little bit of up sound. And uh, you could, I don't know if you, it's coming across. When we do the other um, filter on it, you'll be able to hear the tone much more uh, because it's louder. And um, I, I'm keeping this mic on for this whole session until we actually play trumpet because, well, it's, it's picking up all that nuance. Uh, so if you can't hear it, maybe try headphones uh, if you're interested at all to do it. But uh, mainly I'm trying to get a more kind of buzzy, um, nasally bright sound out of it. Something uh, that's akin to the singing that I might do for trumpets. So like instead of, oh, that's not the kind of singing I want to do for trumpet. I mean, it's fine and it'll get you the pitches, but hey, 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 almost like a... I mean, it doesn't sound like good singing tone, but you can kind of hear how it approximates trumpet tone. And uh, I've heard from a number of people now that those, the, that the, the tongue position that does that is usable for the trumpet. And that has been my experience as well. Uh, if that doesn't make sense to you, um, I believe that uh, Phil Collins, the singing trumpet just came out not long ago. I have a copy of it somewhere. And uh, people have been emailing me and talking to me about this book which I still haven't cracked open because I can't find my copy. But uh, I, uh, that, that is what is in that book, and um, it couldn't come from a better source. I, even, I can give you my carte blanche recommendation. If it came from Phil Collins, it is good. Uh, he is incredible and a, a, a extremely bright mind uh, for trumpet uh, and, and other things as well. So just uh, a, a good plug there, but that's, that's part of where that comes from too. So 
Like I said, I haven't read it yet. Uh, I came from other places as well, but that's what we're looking for on the up sound. So um, I really should find the rest of my up sound. It's just, it's a little bit um, adult looking and I'd rather not have that on my stream even in the background because I don't know. If you have one of these, you know what I mean. Um, and if you don't, then don't worry about it. But okay, so we're gonna switch to the other one. And uh, this is about the timing that I was using in the hotel room. Just like kind of casual, you know, read a book, walk around, get some water. Uh, water is a good idea, just off screen. Ah, nice cold water is a good way to protect your chops a little bit. Um, not too cold, but if it's a little bit cold, it helps reduce the swelling just a little bit so that you don't start. My, my top lip type tends to sneak out of the mouthpiece in order to get this fleshier part as a part of the response. And that's great until it swells up and now I can't even use that. So then I have to take even more out. I end up just getting this blown open aperture, uh, really spread top lip and um, that can be really dangerous. Uh, as a matter of fact, that is what happened to me during the Brass Quintet concert a little bit. I have all these high piccolo parts and that piccolo mouthpiece is almost designed to, do, to take advantage of that. Um, do I have it here? I do. No, this is a different mouthpiece, sorry. It's in here, but um, yeah, it's, it's, very, it's a very slow rounded rim that doesn't, it's not, and it's extremely shallow. So it's basically just these like curves that go into the mouthpiece and have just a tiny bit of alpha angle, but almost no bite basically. And, uh, and since it's such a shallow mouthpiece, it doesn't even have a drop. And so what that does is as you play, as you play with more pressure, it reduces the spot at which the mouthpiece is contacting the, uh, the, the lip in the innermost uh, area, right? So in other words, if it's shaped like this and I press my lip into it, then it keeps deadening the lip out here. And then in here, it's making basically my aperture smaller passively. Um, and so then you can play the high notes, right? But man, does that cause some bad swelling? And this mouthpiece is like, oh yeah, that's fine. Just, you know, reset and you can do it again and again and again and again. And then at some point it hits this sort of nerve area where it's just, it's just, you can't, you can't make it play anymore. And your concert needs to be over before then. So I, I wouldn't recommend it uh, as, a, as a general principle, but I designed it because I had all these gigs that required me to do those things. And I just couldn't, I couldn't sustain the gig. I couldn't play the whole thing. I would play half of it roughly, maybe three quarters, sometimes not even a full half. I just, I'd play like two tunes and just be done. And, um, well, that was the Bill Chase story, right? Uh, that supposedly he was really great for half a gig and then couldn't play anymore. And he kept saying, it's his mouthpiece, it's his mouthpiece. And, uh, it's his trumpet, it's his trumpet. And he's like, oh, sure. And then, uh, and then he finally got a new trumpet and mouthpiece and, and then he was the Bill Chase, you know, played all night. So uh, I knew that story. I don't know if it's true or not, but I, I kind of thought, oh, yeah. And then I got a 6A4A, which is the mouthpiece he played. And uh, lo and behold, it kind of worked for me. And so then I, it wasn't quite right. It's very, it's a sort of simple, bright sound when I play it. So I had a mouthpiece design that was a little bit more, uh, uh, I don't know, progressively. It, it's, a, it's not as it's not shallow in the same way. And so th that helps me get a little bit more tone to it, but it basically works the same way as the 6A4A. So if you're looking for something like that, go get yourself a, a stock 6A4A. That's not what Bill Chase actually played. He played a custom one, but um, I find the stock one works that way better than the custom, the actual Bill Chase models. And then the Jet Tone Bill Chase model, um, about half of the rim is the same and the other half, do it doesn't work at all for me. So um, anyway, something to, something to check out. Okay, so now we're gonna do this uh, up sound, the original, with the, the little filter basket guy in there. And uh, I think that this has been around long enough for me to let it, let, let it be known what these are called. Um, I knew that I knew, let me, let me show you this thing. So here it is in all of its glory. I'm trying to get it in focus here. Focus is weird on, ah, oh, there we go, right in the corner, sort of in focus. Anyway, this filter, Right, and it's quarter. I think, believe this is quarter inch um, threads, uh, thre threaded uh, uh, pipe. Right. I knew I knew what this was, 
And as soon as I got it, I started Googling and it took me about a year of like pretty consi- Every time I got curious, I'd go back online and I finally figured it out. It's called a solenoid muffler. And if you know that this is a solenoid muffler, then you can go find other solenoid mufflers, right? Like this one. And this one is a ceramic uh, covered plastic, plastic cover, pla- plastic covering ceramic. And this is just a little extra hard. This is very expensive. This one's like 25 bucks by itself usually, but man, is it good. And then I've got a bunch of other ones. Let's see if I can find some other ones. Um, you can get the tiny version of that, which uh, is really just like the original, so you don't really need it. Um, let's see if I can find a couple others. This one is very good. This is like a little canister. Well, we can try it out. It's easier blowing than the original, but you can cover up. It's got these slits on the side, and you can cover up some of the slits to manage the air pressure better um, so that you can dial it into what you like. I'll try that in a little bit. And then uh, then you've got some that really just don't work. These are adjustable. Uh, they have a little spring in there, and you can adjust the amount, and uh, they don't work at all. Um, some other ones. But anyway, we're going to try this. And remember, we're going for this kind of tone and it'll work just like that but let's get the aperture set and then we'll get that tongue position and then we'll do it on here So we're trying to get, see what, uh, uh, mm -hmm. so F sharp about, um, that's pretty good. I got up to high A the other day on medium tones, but it was with this one and this has a little more resistance to blow into. So I I think maybe that's why, uh, this one is tends to be a little squirrely, but this is, so this is how I worked on my high range and we'll switch back to the other one. Hopefully you could hear the timbre a little bit. Uh, change that time. I was trying really hard to just start bright. Now, a lot of people don't play that way, and that's okay, too. Uh, that's just like the <laughs> drilled out one and a half C's. Like, is, if that works, then you should do it. Uh, don't, don't, don't listen to me. Like, don't do what I do, because it probably won't work. But um, when you keep a journal, when, you're, when your tr- trumpet playing is self-guided, you tend to do things that are well, you tend to be, be working on projects that seem like they're helping you do something, go, going in the right direction of the way that you want to play better. And so you might do things that are not what other people recommend all the time. Uh, a lot of times you'll do exactly what somebody recommends because it worked for a long time. And then later in your life, you'll find that that thing is not the only solution you needed. And so, uh, again, it, this is not a, it's not a race and it's, it, it's really kind of about incorporating all the things. So uh, a lot of people will use these devices and get a very buzzy, uh, sorry, very airy buzz. And that's also great if that's what you're going for, right? There's a reason that that is the way that you want to buzz. Um, I don't want that because I'm not working on that project in the same way. 
Uh, in fact, I sort of spent my undergrad working on that project, and so an, a, an airy buzz is not for me. Uh, there's also the pinwheel buzz. I actually need to pick up a pinwheel so I can use this with my students, but where the, the buzz, this is just on the mouthpiece usually. It has very, it's like it'll spin a pinwheel because there's so much air going by. We call that blow by and sometimes. sometimes. Uh, I, there's a good reason to do that with the proper guidance of a teacher who knows how to use that. Um, and I think that it's essentially trying to light up that standing wave reflection that we were getting out of the lead pipe or out of the tr whole trumpet uh, so that you're not, in other words, just buzzing your lips, but you're actually playing the whole instrument. Um, like I said, I spent my undergrad trying to figure that out. So I tend to be the opposite where I'm, I'm too spread. I'm playing the whole instrument, but I'm not playing it efficiently anymore because I'm, 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 too, I'm leaning on that too hard. So I'm trying to go back the other way, but with balance. So that's why we're doing it this way. Um, I, I did work on my high range. I, I, in fact, just last night, I got it all the way up to, uh, I'm sorry, two nights ago. Um, I got it all the way up to F concert, which is like high G. And uh, I just was doing this kind of up sound, medium tones, but also like scalar exercise and also kind of like the, the high range exercise we always do. So we're gonna do that last and we'll take a quick rest, so short rest, I should say, and then we're going to play some trumpet and see what we can get into and see if what I did worked or if it was a total disaster. So let's get our A. Uh, sorry, what I'm doing now is uh, I, I want to send the air the way I want to send it. But I also want to get that tongue position, that posture of my tongue and my and my lips. I want to figure that out. So I'm letting the pitch be whatever it wants to be with what I want to send. A lot of times it'll go higher, and then I I realize, oh, okay, I have more room, or I'm blowing too hard. Um, whatever it is, I can adjust it after the fact. If I just tell it to be an A, I'm just learning a way to play A, and that's not that's not really what I want to do here, right? I want to play the trumpet. Well, this device right now a certain way and I want to find out what that means what you know when I do it and then I want to be able to control the pitch so don't don't get it backwards when you do this uh, when you do any kind of exercise make sure you're not just getting the note you want but instead you're figuring out how to play well and then how to make that play the note you want all right so uh... So we got up to C sharp-ish concert, um, pretty good so far. But uh, what I'm trying not to do, what will happen on a short device like this, a mouthpiece, uh, mouthpiece extended, you know, whatever this is, um, mouthpiece buzzing device, is you're you'll get up to a certain point and your lips are starting to roll into each other too much, and you'll get this squirrel. You could hear it there a little bit. We get this squirrely like it won't lock in, and that means you're not really using your tongue position. And your air, your air uh, speed, you're starting to use pressure and tightening the aperture. That may mean that that's the only way to do it because your aperture is out of position. It may also mean that you're used to just kind of blowing hard and tightening the lip, and you know that will work up to a certain note. Uh, so what we want to do is try to find a way to play like the A up to E, right? That was all very glidey and very locked in because. It, the lips are just vibrating. They're not part of the compression equation except to vibrate and that the, the aperture is just the right size. When I go above that, if I start to change the lip, 
then, I, then I, I can't use that same method. So what we do is try to sneak it up and say, okay, well, I can play up to E. Can I play F that way? Let's just do a half step. Oh, that, that seems okay. And then maybe I'll come back in on that, just like try to reestablish that um, and make sure that that can work that way. And then, well, guess what? I have enough room to do another half step. And so that's what I was doing two nights ago that uh, I got all the way up um, to, to high F. Uh, so let's try a little bit of that. And the high range exercise is like this, right? You, you do a lip trill and then you do the next note and back and then the, then start the next scale degree and go up a note and back, right? That's what that's about too. So that's what we're doing. Let's get a... That's what we want. Good. So we got our high F sharp. So now I'm not going to do more of that because, well, quite frankly, it's hard. And I have a trumpet behind me, finally, after four days now. Um, so to tell you a little bit about the trip uh, with regard to trumpet, um, I, let's see, we left early, early, early in the morning on, I guess, Friday, Saturday? Saturday, Sunday, yeah, Saturday. And uh, so I couldn't play before I left. Got on a plane, went to Boston, got checked into the hotel. That would have been a good time for me to play a little bit, but I was so exhausted from the trip, it was hard to do. And so I didn't play until we got back to the hotel that night uh, after exploring the city a little bit and doing the expo and other stuff at Boston Marathon. And uh, so I played about 25, 30 minutes um, that night at, in the hotel room, just figuring this stuff out. Uh, then the next night, I went down to a ballroom. This is Sunday night. I went down to a ballroom and played uh, a lot longer, probably about 40 minutes. Yeah, it says right there in front of me. Yeah, it was exactly 36 minutes, I guess. Um, so not bad. And I did more stuff. I did these high-range exercises and stuff like that. And then Monday was the marathon, so that's what we did all day. I didn't I, I, I had, had designs on maybe coming back to the hotel in the middle of the day and playing, but uh, it just didn't work out that way because I, I wanted to see my girlfriend run in the marathon. And uh, what you'll find out if you ever do one of these is once you're there, you're there. You're not getting back to anywhere. Um, I didn't even make it to the finish of the race uh, until almost an hour after she finished because I was stuck. Uh, so uh, I, And I could have played, I guess, when I got home at 2 in the morning. And if I was younger, I would have done that. But I, I need to sleep now more than I need anything else. So, um, so but that's what I did. Um, so I, I really only played twice in th four days, almost. For Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, right? Oh, fr Friday I played. So, yeah, just three days. Twice in three days. And, um, and I'd never played the trumpet. I just played these mouthpieces and the up sound and the uh, embouchure hooting out. That's all I did. So, um, yeah, we're going to rest for a second and see. Uh, this is a good time for me to ask if anybody has questions. Uh, there's only a couple of people on, but sometimes they are people who ask questions. So now's a great time to ask those of me. Um, please do. But uh, So we're going to get the B-flat trumpet out. It, why B-flat? Um, it could be anything, but B-flat is home for most people, right? You start off playing B-flat trumpet when you're young. Uh, you probably warm up mostly on the B flat trumpet. Now that's not everybody. Uh, I, I have warm ups on C that are on this very YouTube channel. Um, I, uh, I I have warmed up on C for years as my primary instrument when I was playing in orchestras primarily. But uh, and and it's part of my daily routine as far as lead pipe buzzing goes, no matter what. But B flat tends to be the thing that we feel most comfortable on. And since I took basically three days off from the trumpet, I want the familiar thing to be the first thing that I do when I get back. Now, if I was trying to change something 
based on that familiarity, right? Maybe I don't like my familiarity, my, 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 the way that I play the B flat trumpet, maybe I don't like that, right? So now would be a great time to play C trumpet for my first notes back. Uh, so that it's, that's something you can do. If you're having trouble, let's say playing piccolo trumpet, you're like, oh man, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I just can't figure the piccolo trumpet out. Well, actually coming back from a break might be a good time to figure some things out because you don't have, you lack some familiarity with the instruments. Uh, and so you won't do things exactly the same way. And so therefore you have a slightly better chance of figuring something new out. Now that doesn't mean if that thing takes strength, you won't have it. So you can't figure that out. If that thing takes coordination that is related to the way you normally play, that's not going to help either. But if you really are just like trying anything, sometimes you can have a big breakthrough after a break. So it's worth thinking about. Oh yeah. My dad says, welcome back from Beantown. Yeah. It was a good trip. Um, except for the, well, we'll see. We're about to see, right? Um, okay. So what, what's the first thing we're going to do on the B flat trumpet? Well, I don't know. Let's, let's just see if a note comes out, huh? Right? Like, I'm not going to do anything fancy or funny. I just want to know what happens when I blow on this thing, right? So now we've set this all up, right? I can even go back. I can even, let's even do it. Let's apply, right? What we just did. Yeah, that's getting the, the buzziness that I want. Oops, sorry, I blew you out of the water there, but okay, so it's working. So let me just, I'm going to turn off the, this mic and let's, uh, let's just mess around with it for a while and see if we can apply that to this. did slightly skip something that I said was important, uh, which is the, the response, the medium tones. We did it a little bit, but I really did it a lot. Uh, that's what I spent most of my time on was like 10 or 15 minutes of just breathe and blow and the response comes right out. So we can do that too, right? Yeah, so good. So I, the good news is I'm not totally boned. I didn't, I didn't just totally lose my ability to play at all, but you notice me, I'm doing trill tones right around D and E. That's because that's where, uh, that's where it gets a little unstable. Now, this is a very important thing, and I'm glad we're doing this on stream together because if I was in better trumpet shape, right? If I brought a trumpet on this tour, uh, on this tour, on this, uh, on this trip, I would have played the trumpet a lot, probably in a practice mute, and I wouldn't have this problem as C to D to E, 
right? It wouldn't be fuzzy there for me. But since it is, let's try to figure out what, why is it fuzzy there? What's, what's the cause of that, right? I didn't have a trumpet. I had these mouthpieces and I played them. And when you play the mouthpiece, a lot of, almost everything is kind of lip based feelings, right? Because you don't have the length of trumpet to blow into. So you could say, well, Gabriel, obviously the reflection is the problem. Uh, and the, you know, you're not using it anymore because you didn't have it for three days. And so now you just need to blow into the horn harder and you'll be fine. Okay. Yeah, we could say that. And that's definitely part of it, I'm sure. But consider something else. Where did things start to go weird on the up sound? It was that same range, right? Let's see. Just a little bit higher than that, right? Which makes sense because this is shorter and it has more resistance. Um, that's where, that's why I start to do some lippy things uh, I don't want to do. So, Yeah, now we've now we're getting somewhere because this now I'm not changing a lot of stuff to play all these notes and it's sounding very even and it's responding really evenly, right? So I'm learning something new that I couldn't have learned without this kind of problem that I've caused. And that's we want every opportunity to learn. Now, am I saying you should take a bunch of days off so that you can find out how uh, you know where where the holes are in your playing? No. You can do this without having to take time off and habits are much more important to build than uh, holes are to fill most of the time. But that doesn't mean, some holes are, are really important. And in, in my case, I've been working over this no problem for a long time, but I'm essentially using strength to mask the problem, which is that I, I, change, I change my embouchure a little bit right there at the top of the staff. What if I didn't have to do that? Well, I'd be a better trumpet player, wouldn't I? Because um, everything would come out more evenly. I could build a single habit on top of all my playing about how the response should happen instead of multiple different ways that the response might happen and then a, a bridge where I'm not sure which one it's going to be in this range, right? And that's what we're finding is that this is the bridge range where it's not the high range yet where I know how that works and it's not the medium range where it's easy to make it work. It's the middle high range and I think, I think this is important. A lot of people need to spend a lot more time here and, uh, and, and pay, pay attention to these things. It's not just play the notes, notes there. It, when I'm in shape, I play the notes there all the time, but I don't necessarily notice that I need to get better. So that's, that's why this opportunity is important. And I was already violating the thing I said earlier in the stream, which is when you've taken time off, you need to rest more when you come back. So now that we know that it didn't kill us, uh, I'm gonna start to do more normal routine things and uh, I'm going to also get out some etudes and just play through them because I need to get back in shape. I have lessons to teach tomorrow that I need to be a good example of good trumpet playing for. And uh, I, I took a risk a little bit knowing, knowing that it would probably be fine. But, uh, and it looks like it is. So it's, it's okay, but I need to make sure that I can do the things that I ask my students to do so that I can demonstrate them. And so that's what we're going to do a little bit. Because um, I have eight lessons in a row tomorrow. And uh, that's... Eight hours of trumpet playing in a day is already a lot. Uh, you don't play the whole time in a lesson, of course, but 
what you play is usually solo repertoire. <laughs> and so it's going to be like I played two recitals tomorrow by the end of the day. Um, so what do we need to do on the trumpet today before we quit? Well, I'm not going to make you sit through my whole day of practice because I'm probably going to practice for the next four hours on and off and big, 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 big breaks with, you know, housework and other things around it. Um, and school work, I've got some homework to do. But uh, I'm going to do some lead pipe buzzing uh, through the vented valve so that I can make sure that I am using that reflection to the fullest ability. Uh, but I'm going to try to maintain this, this new, whatever it is. I, I'm not really sure yet. I think it's a new tongue position and maybe a new lip posture. Just very slightly different, but they're working better in tandem than normal. And, so I, 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 and what I'm finding is I'm fighting it. So I'm going to try to take advantage of this new thing if I can while I'm on the lead pipe. So that's the first step. Then we're going to do some just violin uh, and uh, you know slow slurs, faster slurs. Uh, we are going to do some high range. And again, we're going to try to keep that in this new vein of, of uh, a coordination that we've discovered because of the devices here. And uh, yeah, then I'm going to play some etudes. So I'll try to I'll try to do some of those things and play some etudes for you just because it's, you know, for the camera. Um, and then I'll do those things on and off the rest of the day to just establish good habits. Um, you can't make up for three days in one day, but you can at least decide how you want to play and establish that well, and then wake up in the morning and try to do that again before you teach your lessons. And usually you can, you can do that pretty well. It's also good advice when you come off of a 26 hour plane ride, like you're going to Sydney, Australia, um, and you, you know, need to play a recital that night or the next night, you can get things back in, in working order in about four or five hours of this kind of practice. So, all right, let's, let's do some second valve out lead pipe. This is usually what I would use the C trumpet for, but I want to just stick with this and get familiarity with just one horn first. Oh, some green meanies in there. All right. Yeah, I really like that. So I'm, I've got my tongue in a new position. It's one that I've been sort of journaling about, actually. So I'm, I'm not, I'm putting on like this is totally brand new today. It is genuine the way that I found it, but I am going for something uh, that I described at the beginning. So this, this idea that I, I have like sort of an anchor tongue position that's depressed in the front a little bit more than normal, uh, that kind of makes that nasally eh, kind of buzz, and then I can use almost a quarter of the amount of air I normally use to produce 100% of the volume and brightness. Uh, it's a little brighter than I would like maybe, but I think I can round that out. I want to just get full sound first and then I can limit it back rather than try to add in things to my sound that, you know, aren't there. That's, that's a lot harder. So let's do that again. That was good. Sorry, I didn't explain what I did at the beginning there. Uh, I noticed that when I went to go, like, just get the first note, that it was like, right? I got a, like a air ball, and that meant that I was coming from too open and forcing my lips together. That's not what we want. We want to blow the lips open into vibration, right? Now, if they're too tight, you get resistance to the air there, and that makes a small sound. But if they're just right, it just goes. And that's what we, we needed to find that poo attack version of that. Uh, and then I could 
find the tongue position and get the air channeled into it. That's the answer. So it's poo attack, right? It'll be, it'll be sharp, but it'll be like a, uh, this is what pop tones are good for. What I find doing too many of them makes me sort of puff the air in a way that I, it's not very helpful. So I try to get that position to the lips. Then I'm going to put my tongue down in the front, but anchor tongue position. Get that, that, that singing buzziness. And then I'm going to put the volume in if I need it even. And that's when I check it on the bell. Okay, let's do it. Another way to think about this is that uh, I, if I blow really hard, I feel that reflection pushing back at me, and then I can lean on that, right? That's how I often will teach it. It's probably how I teach it in all of the current warm-ups. But what if instead of air volume, I found the reflection with uh, oral posture? So in other words, my vowel shape. If I can find the reflection with the vowel shape, I can use much less air to get it. And uh, I believe that that is the concept of the, of, of the vowel shape, the singing, um, that, that I, essentially the same air reaches much further and I can find that reflection and, and use it and lean on it even. That's what I was struggling with on the D just now. Uh, I was getting this kind of like muffled and I was, it sounded fine on the, on the actual horn, but I never felt the reflection. And it was because I, I needed to lower my tongue even more in the middle. And so again, this is my awareness. Your uh, mileage may vary, but this is the kind of stuff I want to work on. So uh, it'll hopefully make me more efficient and better. So we're going to do that a lot today, but uh, let's move on to some lip slurs. Uh, I think I can, I can leverage these into lip slurs and kind of get somewhere and play some etudes for you. And then that, this is what I'm going to repeat the rest of the day. Okay, so one more time on that and we'll get into some lip slurs as, as we figure it out. Yeah, that's, that's kind of enough for now. Weirdly, it sort of wears on you a little bit uh, when, you're, when you're out of shape. Uh, things wear out really fast, but that doesn't mean you didn't do it the right way. It means you need to rest. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. But I, I think you, you can hopefully hear on, on the recording here that I'm finding a really efficient way to play with a very big sound uh, that's not really a lot of air. Now my lip position is not as, it's not in that pliable, flexible position the same way as when I use a little more air. 
but I think I would like to figure that out. And if I can't, I'll just blow harder. That's easy. We all do that uh, quite well and often. So I don't need to worry about blowing harder. I need to worry about what if I didn't want to, or what if I can't, what if it's soft? And the Schlossberg book is great at this of just saying like, okay, you can play higher, but you also have to play softer. And that's gonna be tongue position. That's gonna be shapes, not volume of air, right? So. Um, I, and if I had the Schlossberg book here with me, or maybe I would do those instead. I can memorize, I mean, I have a bunch of them memorized. I probably will do them later today, but not right now. So we're just, we're just resting for a second. Again, if anybody has questions, please let me know. Um, but, uh, yeah, this, like I said, this is going to be a slightly longer live stream. We're already, uh, above an hour, hour and 15, as a matter of fact. And I haven't really done anything yet, except explain these gadgets and do them for you and, talk too much about, you know, high concept trumpet playing, I guess. But um, to me, it doesn't really sound, it doesn't feel that high concept. It's like, well, it's just figure out what, what things you want to uh, improve on. Uh, a student recently asked me this, and I sent him an email about it. Um, but uh, like, you know, how do you come up with the things to work on that you do? And I, was, I thought about this for a long time and couldn't really figure out a good answer because it was like, well, I don't try to. It's just, you know, and I don't think there's anything special about what I do. Um, I think if you listen to trumpet and other things too, right? If you listen to voice especially, if you listen to singing, violin, cello is amazing. There's so many colors in the cello. Um, if you listen to other instruments and trumpet as well, really great trumpet playing, then you hear things and you go, wow, man, that's amazing. I wish I could do that. And then you try to do that. Um, that's it. And if you can't figure it out, then you, okay, try, try for a little while and see where you get. You might get 2%. Let's say it's the color change of a soprano. They, they, sopranos have a, just an amazing range of colors if they choose to use them. Um, okay, so if I want that, if I get 2% more color change than I did yesterday because I tried to sound like a soprano. Um, that's great. That's amazing. That's 2% better than I did yesterday. And more than that, I hopefully noticed the mechanism that's starting to work towards more color change. And maybe I can abstractly work on that thing. Uh, I was just talking to my students about how I'm working on double tonguing with, uh, with metal drumming, right? Metal drumming they have double bass drum pedals and uh, there's single stroke, you know, left, right, left, right, left, right, um, single stroke, double ba bass drum pedal. And then there's double stroke where they do sort of like a, like a heel toe scenario on each one. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I'm not doing it right with my hands, but um, those are really fast. It's softer, um, but they all use, they all use triggers. So it doesn't matter how soft it is as long as it hits. And so, but man, it's really extreme you know, 180 and above uh, 16th notes. And so you're talking about really fast articulation of some sort, right? And I want to keep up with that. So I just, I put on records in the car, metal, metal albums and just, and what, what can I do? You know, is there a way for me to keep up? Uh, now I, I've noticed weirdly that my dentition like really affects my double tonguing. So that's something to consider. But um, anyway, uh, yeah, I, I heard something that I wanted and then I tried to do it and then I found out why it's hard and now I'm going to work on that. So that's really all there is to this. Um, I, I want to I wanna build good skills on the trumpet, but I have to hear first. I have to think about what the sounds are first. And uh, then I try to find a way to do it, even if that is just body intuition, I have no idea what I'm doing, which is a little bit the case right now with this stuff. Um, but then I do it more and I do it more often and I do it when I'm fresh and I do it when I'm wasted and I do it when uh, I just played a piece and when I haven't played for 45 minutes, right? Just all the different ways that I can, and I, but I, I do it with intention and that's, I think, the, the way forward for most people. Anyway, let's do some more of this. Um, I'm not going to do the valve out uh, for the whole exercise, but I want to do it one more time and then we'll do a bunch of bylins and see what we can get done.
a little air bubble up here. I'm um, noticing that my, my embouchure doesn't want to hold as much, probably because this takes different holding than this does, right? The length of this uh, engages, I think, more muscles and in a different way for longer. So uh, that's probably part of what I screwed up on my uh, journey is that I didn't play long tones. Ah, easy one, right? Could have done it, didn't do it, paid the price. That's okay. I take more rest and uh, in more frequent rest that is not as long is a good way to sort of simulate when you can't do long tones, but you want to. So that's what we're going to do. And we're not doing long tones, of course. We're doing lip slurs, but they're almost long tones. did a couple in a row. Now we're going to rest a little bit for our last two. And again, you might say, Gabriel, geez, you know, you must be really out of shape. You're taking so many breaks, talking so much, barely played any notes today. Um, yeah, yeah, that's right. I am. Um, say what you want, but I, uh, I'm going to be careful and smart about the way that I do this. And um, yeah, I, this is another totally, uh, not off topic, but um, I guess something about our community. Uh, I'm on a bunch of forums and I've sort of been, been around the block a couple of times in the real world and um, people are very opinionated about what is good and is not good about um, in pe pe pedagogically, uh, warm-ups, mouthpieces, of course, trumpets, all this kind of stuff. And they, you have to remember that they're using their experience to... Um, validate their opinion, right? In other words, that this their opinion is, is from their experience, and so therefore it's already pre-validated. And uh, that is right. That, there's nothing wrong with that in, in, in concept, right? Uh, what you always have to remember as a person with an experience and an opinion is that someone else's experience may not, may, may validate a different opinion. And if those are at odds, how can they both be right? Well, because you're different people and because you have different needs. And so um, I will often talk about these kinds of things in a master class or sometimes on, on stream here, and I will get a little bit of backlash about like, well, you know, I, uh, I heard what you said, but, you know, I don't think it's good to take time off that way. Or I, I, wouldn't, I, I would always take a trumpet if I were you. Um, you know, I can't, I can't survive without the trumpet. And I am, I, I'm a person with an opinion. I am one of those people who, like I said, this is the first time ever. I always take a trumpet because it, 
I need to. Um, but I thought I'd try, I'd try, you know, walking on the other side of the fence, right? I, some people can take a week off and then they just come back and they play great. How do they do that? You know, wouldn't you like to know? And, uh, and so I, I see these people on the internet arguing all the time about the best ways to do things, the best options for people that, when they try to answer people's questions, the best mouthpiece, whatever it is. And I, I like all that. I think it's really good to get a bunch of different opinions. That's why you go to a second doctor, right? Second opinion. Uh, make sure that the first doctor and the second doctor agree a little bit about what's wrong with you, right? Well, it's the same thing with trumpet, uh, except there's way more and nobody ha nobody's a medical doctor usually. <laughs> the, in fact, their, their opinions are mostly validated just by their experience. And that's why doctors go to med school because uh, they didn't used to, right? Long, long, long time ago, there was no med school. So it was just like a guy and he figured out how to help people sometimes. But that's why we had bloodletting, because if, you're, if you had bad blood, just get rid of it. Well, yeah, and then die from maybe anemia or blood loss, right? Um, a lot of stuff we did, leeches, for instance. I mean, technically, some of these things did help cure people, but mostly it was letting things run, run their course, and, uh, except that doctors didn't know that. And uh, so that it's, a good, it's a good idea to be wary of people's opinions about what will and won't work, especially mine on this channel. Everything I do is wrong. And uh, that's, I, having been the person that does everything wrong most of my life and still getting some results out of it, um, I would encourage you to try things that you think might work no matter what they are. Um, and most of all, come up with them yourself uh, because you, they, they're based on your intuition because you, then your experience will validate the next steps that you take. And then if they work, well, guess what? Those were the right steps and you didn't need to ask anybody about it, right? Uh, if you're stuck, ask a professional and they'll give you the steps that worked for them, hopefully. Or if they're really good, they'll give you the steps that will work for you most likely based on what they hear in your playing, what they see in your playing when you play, uh, and what they know your experience has been in the past. I think we can do a much better job as teachers of recognizing those differences in approach and coming up with the solutions for the individual, not just the global situation like this is the way that I think trumpet playing should work and you better do it this way now, oh no that's all wrong you gotta you know revamp it and start all over I used to be that way uh, because I only knew how to do it one way and so I'm trying to be better than that anyway we got two more of these and then we're gonna play some etudes and I haven't worked on my high range yet I guess we better do that too all right here we go All right, we finished them. Uh, and you may also notice a little bit of a wobble in my sound. That's the muscles kind of not wanting to work that much, that hard. Um, but that's okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm evening it out. If you listen back, you can hear me. I'll hear the wobble, and then I'll kind of dedicate more attention to the air. And when I do that, then it settles in instead of trying to hold things with the lip, right? Okay. Uh, and that's a, a result, direct result of doing these all week instead of playing the long trumpet, right? If you play the very long trumpet, like the natural trumpet, uh, you are even better at this. That's a great way to even out your sound is to play natural trumpet for a little while. 
and you, there's, you have no option but to blow really evenly. Otherwise, it just you just get clams, clams casino. So uh, let's do a little bit of high range. Again, with, with this idea that if I can do it on this device, right, and not pinch my lips together so much, uh, I should be able to do it on this device. Maybe not. Maybe the length is what is the killer. But I think there's a way. And that's what we're going for, right? We don't know how to do it. We're trying. Just a little bit of high range. Then I'll play an etude and then we'll be done. So I'm not getting as nice a lip trill as I normally do, but I'm also really blowing about half as hard. And I'm probably using about the same amount of pressure. So this feels easier, but it's taking a little more muscle strength out here. And maybe that's a good thing. Maybe, at least it's not damaging my muscles here as much. So moving that work outward might be a good thing. Or maybe those muscles are too weak and this is a bad way to play. I don't know. I guess I'll find out in a couple days, right? Um, but I'm just going to do all the lip trills up, up to high C. And uh, I'll do my full high range thing later in the day and see if it's possible uh, when I've rested a lot more. But um, you know what that sounds like. I do it on every, you know, every one of these streams. So uh, I'm not going to do the whole thing right now. I'm, I'm going to just do the lip trills. And that's a good way to start. If you can't do the high F sharp uh, octave, don't worry about it. Just do these lip trills until they're easy. I thought I could goose it and get it done, but anyway, all right, well, what are we going to play? Uh, here's a bad idea. Let's go with that. I'm going to play, I think this is a Harris Etude number 32. It's almost definitely like Bach or Gavinier or something. Uh, I know I should be able to tell the difference between those, but honestly, as soon as I start playing violin music, I just know that it's violin music in it, and then I get tired. <laughs> but I, I did practice this a little bit. Um, both before I left for this trip and while I was on the trip, I actually, you know, found some time to just look through fingerings. Um, I didn't mention that I did that, I guess, but, um, that's something you can always do is work on your music. And I'm going to stand up to play this. I, I tend to stand more when I play anyway, and, uh, I'll have to adjust this guy, get it to the top of that thing there. There we go. That's pretty good. Yeah. Something like that. Maybe a little lower. Good enough, right? Okay. I've been sitting this whole time just because I'm tired. I walked around a lot yesterday. So, um, all right. Um, oh, oh, my valve top was loose. So uh, I, hope you, I hope you've learned something a little bit today about just like when you take time, when you need, need to take a trip, there are still some things you can do. A lot of people will just take like the peat part of you know, the, a literal peat, or um, some people do the pencil trick, which let me find a real regular pencil. Um, well, this is close enough. Um,
and you try to keep it as steady as possible outside the teeth, not inside, or inside the teeth if you can't do it, I think is the way. I, I'm not a pencil trick guy, so I don't always know. Uh, what I do know is that if it's too hard for you, get a shorter pencil. It'll be easier. Uh, or a straw, right? Um, where's my straw? There. I don't know that it matters if it's like bouncing, but a lot of people just take something like that and just like try to stay. There used to be a thing called chopsticks that were different weighted lengths of metal with a little rubber end and you could put them in your mouth and, um, and sort of do weightlifting. And a lot of people swore by those. It's like, yeah, just that's all I need when I go on, on, on a trip. I just do those for 10 minutes a day or 20 minutes a day or whatever they said. And, um, I find that that's not a good way for me to stay in shape. It doesn't, first of all, I'm not blowing air, so it's not connected to anything, even though I am getting strong, I think, uh, if I do it. So these are better for me. Um, I'm always blowing air. And what I, my, my struggles are all about response, um, flexibility, uh, uh, tone, and, um, and range. And uh, that's what these help me work on, at least as much as I could. So I think this was a successful project. Will I do it again? Um, not if I don't have to. Uh, I, I will never not bring a trumpet if I don't, if I have the option to bring a trumpet. Um, even if that means playing in a practice mute, that's still better than nothing unless I have to do it for too long. Uh, practice mutes can be dangerous above a few days of, you know, exclusive practice mute playing. And certainly don't do that for many, like, hours and hours. Don't do that. Um, but uh, these, actually, I, can, I could do this for an hour. And so that's, it's better than a practice mute in that way, but I, I also would love the whole trumpet. And uh, if you can play bell open every day, you can have a chance to get better every day. If you can't, well, some of these tools might help you get better at some things while you're taking a break from the horn. Um, but you ultimately, the horn is, the, the trumpet is the trumpet, uh, and you got to play it and figure out all of its quirks and everything like that. So anyway, let's, uh, I'm, I'm just going to practice this. I, like I said, I, I kind of know it, but I'm real rusty on it. Um, and so it will probably be real bad, but you can just turn off the stream right now uh, because you're in control. You don't have to watch this. Um, I just want to give people something to kind of, I don't know, I want, I want to play and see what I can do. And then I'm going to take this in the other room, watch TV and get some homework done and, uh, and just pick this up every 10 minutes and play a couple of things on it. And, you know. Well, first I'm going to oil this valve actually. So anyway, that's that's going to be the, the it for today. Uh, I know it's an off day stream, and uh, as a matter of fact, I was supposed to teach today, but I didn't think I would get back in time, and I was right. So uh, I guess I technically barely got back if I if I went straight to school as soon as I woke up, I might have been able to teach one lesson, but I wouldn't have been good for, good for it, you know, mentally or physically. So. Uh, anyway, I'll I'll try to stream again Friday. I'm teaching some of my makeup lessons then too. But uh, if I'm here at home in the right time of day, I'll be here Friday. So I'll see you then.
but as a page, it's pretty brutal. But my smaller aperture is really helping me out. So a pretty rough run on an etude I don't know very well. Um, and you might say, Gabriel, that doesn't sound like a very good way to end a stream or to, uh, something to do uh, when, uh, when you're, you know, trying to get back in shape. Uh, yeah, you're right. But also, some of it was very successful in ways that I sh didn't deserve. And so that's intriguing. And the rest of it that wasn't successful, that was me struggling against it, that's me building back some strength too, right? Even if that strength is not the, in the best coordination, I also need to just actually play trumpet, right? Because that's what I didn't do for three days. So I'm getting used to it again. And uh, I, I'm surprised I got through it at all. Honestly, even with all those stops, I usually would have just quit and I wouldn't have had response about halfway through. So that we're doing good actually. Um, and as, as weird as it is to stop on that note and say that that terrible failure was a success, uh, I do mean it. So I'm going to go now, and I'm going to play a lot more today, and uh, hopefully I'll catch you Friday. All right? Goodbye.